you are about, about to enter, to enter the strange, strange world, 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 world of Mr. Mr. Davis. Davis. This happened a few days ago, and no matter how much I try, I can't find a logical explanation. I've seen some similar stories posted here, so I was hoping you all could help me out. I was in my trigonometry class, and I couldn't help but doze off here and there. My teacher had woken me up a few times, but he had a system in place for people that slept. If he woke you up twice, that was it. And if you fell asleep again, he'd leave you alone. He called it his, it's your education you're missing policy. I wasn't a big fan of it, but I suppose it made sense. I was approaching my third time when I decided to fight my body's hopes of resting. I let out a big yawn and rubbed my eyes, hoping to take the sleep from my eyes. When I looked up, however, I felt as if I needed to rub my eyes again because everything was... wrong. Everyone was frozen. My teacher was holding a marker to the board, never ending the formula he was working on. Everyone in the class was the same way. The kids held their pencils to paper but didn't continue writing. I was getting a little freaked out. There was no way this could have been planned. Sure, I was a chronic class sleeper, but this was just too elaborate. Furthermore, the projector's fan had stopped as well. It was a very shitty projector that rattled a little while it was on, but it wasn't making any noise. The clock on the wall just sat there. The second hand never clicked forward. Finally, I stepped out of my classroom into the hallway, hoping to spark a reaction from my teacher. Maybe it really was a joke. When I stepped out, though, he didn't even flinch. Furthermore, there was a teacher in the middle of the hallway who had dropped our coffee, but it was just sitting there in the middle of the fucking air. I was no longer freaked out, but completely terrified. Seeing that cup floating there cemented the fact that time was frozen, and it seemed like there was nothing that I could do. I ran into the bathroom and splashed some water on my face, hoping that it was all a dream and that this would wake me up. No matter how many times I did that, nothing seemed to have changed. Feeling defeated, I stepped out of the bathroom, only to find that the teacher I saw before wasn't there. A quick look out the window in the hallway showed me that it was obviously much later. I ran back into my class only to find it empty, aside from the teacher who was at his desk grading papers. He looked up and checked his watch before asking me what I was still doing there. Still doing here, I thought. I looked up at the clock and it was 6 p.m. Somehow in that few minutes of me freaking out about everyone being frozen, nearly three hours had passed. I was totally dumbfounded and really had nothing to say. My teacher explained that I'd fallen asleep and when class was over, he saw me leave but left my backpack. He'd taken it to the office so I could pick it up later. I have no idea what that happened that day, but I really want to know. Did I really walk out of class when it was over? How could I have done that if I was walking around a frozen school at the time? God, it gives me a headache just to think about. I try and not ramble here, but I'm still pretty freaked out by the events of this story. I am currently visiting my parents for my dad's birthday, and I've been sleeping in the basement surface that sounds terrible, but it's a finished basement. There's a TV, some game systems, and a futon down there. The only thing missing was a mini fridge. Anyway, while I was down there last night, I fell asleep watching some chopped reruns on a really low volume. I'm not sure how much time passed, but I was woken up by the blasting sound of static. When I jumped out of the bed and looked over, the TV showed the familiar snow-like static that would come up when the cable was disconnected. I searched everywhere for the remote, but I just couldn't find it. Finally, I retreated to pressing the physical buttons on the TV, but when I got closer to it, I heard it. I heard something. Something underneath that static really caught me off guard. It sounded like a man calling out for help. I could hear his voice, but it seemed 
so far away. And closer. And that is when he seemed to break through the barrier, because the next time I heard it, it sounded like he was right next to my ear. Shocked, I stepped back and stumbled over the table, falling to the ground. The voice kept calling out for help, but I didn't know what the hell to do. Looking at the television, I saw the black specks of static begin coming together. Soon, they formed a figure. It had a large head and a skinny neck. It never moved, but I knew it had to be the thing that I was hearing. Soon after that, it stopped calling out for help and called my name. It called out to me. That was enough to get me off my ass and running upstairs. I stayed up there until my parents got back from my dad's dinner, and I wasted no time telling them what I'd seen. They laughed at how it seemed to remind them of how I acted when I was a kid. I assured them I wasn't crazy, and invited them downstairs to see for themselves. As you may have come to expect, the TV was on chopped reruns, and the volume was where I'd left it when I fell asleep. If they don't believe me, I thought I'd come here to see if anyone else does. I know this community is a little more accepting of stories like these, so I was hoping to find answers. Any input is appreciated. I've had a great deal of sleep paralysis episodes over the years. Some have been tame, others have left me staying up for the rest of the night. A few nights ago though, something happened that took everything to another level. I believe it was an out of body experience. Now with sleep paralysis episodes, the bad ones anyway, I'd always see tall black figures standing in the corners of my room. They were varying in size, but one thing about them was always there. The smoke that seemed to roll off their bodies. It would always fill the room before finally I woke up. This experience was like that one on steroids. I woke up and felt extremely thirsty. Hoping to fix that, I got up out of bed to get some water. When I turned back to the bed to grab my phone though, I saw myself sleeping there. I was stunned still. I couldn't move. My mind couldn't wrap around the idea of me standing up and staring over my body that was asleep. That was when a deep, heavy cold fell over me. I looked all around the room and they were back. Those shadows. One of them standing in each corner of my bedroom. One was tall and lanky. Another was short and fat. The other two were warped and seemed to collapse in on themselves. They all made their way closer to me and stood over me. When the tall one was looking down, the short one looked up, and the twisted ones moved their necks back and forward as if studying me. I was shaking in fear, and it felt as if the entire world was speaking to me at once. I could hear voices coming through these things, but they weren't human. I'm not even sure if I can put it into words. The smoke rolled off of them and filled the room until I couldn't breathe. Finally, I woke up breathing heavy, sweating, and crying. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to even sleep anymore. Is there any way I can fight this and keep it from happening again? What can these shadow figures stand for? And what did they want? Over the past few nights, my house has been getting extremely hot in the middle of the night. I thought at first it was nothing more than my vents acting up, but last night something happened that changed my thoughts completely. I'm not really afraid of what happened, I'm just more of looking for some kind of reason for it. It began like any other night. I was woken up because I was beginning to feel choked. Not literally mind you, but the air around me felt heavy. It seemed like it was hard to get a good amount of air in. I sighed and tried getting up, but I couldn't. I was stuck. I laid there with eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. I could feel the sweat beating up on my forehead, and I wanted to wipe it away, but I just couldn't. 
That was when I saw the patterns on the ceiling. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It looks kind of like smoke, but it also looked like the bottom of a pool on a sunny day. The way those shadows act, it looked very organic. They were all hues of red or orange with bits of black thrown in. I was so lost in it I almost didn't notice the faces. They would only appear for a second or two before fading again. They looked like faces of people who were screaming out for help but there wasn't any sound. The only thing I heard actually was my heart pumping in my ears. The stuffiness had gotten so bad that I thought I might actually pass out. But somehow I broke the spell and sat up breathing like I'd never had before. My body was drenched in sweat, but I pulled myself up from the bed and ran over to turn on the light. As soon as it was on, the room dropped in temperature. I'd assume it was the cool 68 I usually kept my house. I actually got goosebumps because it was so chilly all of a sudden. I took a quick shower to clean off the gross feeling I had from being covered in sweat and thought about what could have happened. I still have no idea how to really explain it. I suppose I can call it sleep paralysis, but has there ever been an experience like that? I'm no believer in the paranormal, but this is an experience I really have no other explanation for. I was waiting for the subway train late one night after staying some extra hours at the office. I wouldn't have been in the position had my car started. I would find out later that there was apparently some issue with my battery. Anyway, I was in the subway, and that's why. I'd say it was around midnight, and I don't work in the greatest part of town, so I thought it'd be best to take the subway rather than walk home. As it turns out, this would lead to the single most terrifying experience of my life. I was standing near the track when I thought I heard someone scream out in absolute agony. I was staring at my phone at the time so it really caught me off guard. When I looked up I didn't see anyone around until I looked down the tunnel on the tracks. There was someone who seemed to be drunk stumbling down the tracks. He was screaming out in pain and reaching a hand out in front of him. I couldn't make out any defining features, but I could tell that he wasn't doing very well. I started to believe that he wasn't drunk, but rather hurt. I called the police and tried to explain the situation. I told them that there was some guy screaming his head off on the subway tracks and it looked like he needed some serious help. To my surprise, they told me that this line was meant for emergencies only. She assured me that there were no screams coming from my end, and no one could walk down the subway tracks. I was totally dumbfounded. I didn't understand how she couldn't hear this man screaming his head off. It was nearly deafening with the echo caused by the tunnel. I called out to him after hanging up and told him to try and run. Once he got up here, I'd pull him up and call an ambulance to come get him. He never responded with words. He just kept screaming in anguish. It was heartbreaking. Finally, I decided that I'd have to save him myself. He was only about 40 feet away at this point, but as soon as I was about to run over to him, I heard the train approaching. I knew there was no way I'd be able to reach him in time. I watched in horror as the subway train came around the bend. I screamed to him to jump out of the way. I waved down the subway car like a hooker on a slow night. I tried everything. It didn't work. The train came around the bend and before I could look away, it collided with nothing. As soon as it would have hit me, vanished. Not into a cloud of red mist as I was expecting, but rather a cloud of smoke. I didn't know what to do. I just stood there, totally lost in the moment. Soon the subway car was beside me and the door opened. A few people stepped out and looked at me as if I was insane. I tried to look past it and just got on before it left again. I sat there on the subway, trying to wrap my head around what happened, and the only conclusion I could come up with was that he was either a spirit or a ghost. The other night, I lost about three hours of time. 
I know that's a strong way to start, but I've read through some other experiences here, and I thought it would be best to just get to the point. It happened after my buddy and I had just called it a night. He had come over for my birthday, and it was approaching midnight. He said he was heading out so he could get some sleep before work. I said cool, and he left. After our goodbyes, I went about cleaning up. Now, we were both drinking, but we would shared a six-pack. I was far from drunk, and obviously he was as well, seeing as I wouldn't have let him drive home if he wasn't. It was when I was loading the dishwasher that the skip seemed to happen. I closed it up and squatted down to set the cycle. When I stood back up, I felt really tired and worn out. It just kind of hit me out of nowhere. I thought that I'd stood up too fast and just got a little lightheaded and brushed it off and headed to bed. I got comfy and went to set my alarm on my phone, but that's when I noticed it. It was 3.30 in the morning. There was no way it took me three hours to do the dishes. I thought about for a second and if time did jump ahead, then that would explain why I felt so fatigued out of nowhere. The only question is, what caused it to happen? Do you guys have any ideas?